Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's Stamping September bonus video. This video is in addition to our current schedule of Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. And today I'm going to use some food themed stamps and do a bit of masking to build up some patterns. So I'm going to start with this pizza stamp and I've got a bit of mixed media paper here and some stays on ink. This is a permanent waterproof ink once dry and I've chosen to use this one because I want to do some uh, wet water-based colouring. So I've stamped four higgledy piggledy pizzas there and I'm going to stamp two more on some post-its and cut these out to make masks. When cutting out a mask I find it's a good idea to cut down the middle of the line, the edge of your image or letter or word or whatever. You don't need to leave any space around the edge because if you do, when you stamp over your mask, you'll get a little gap where you probably don't want it. So I just cut on the black line around the edge. And then I can put it over my pizza and make sure there's no white showing between the edge of the mask and the edge of the stamping that's on the panel here. So I'll do the same thing with this one. So I've popped my mask over the first pizza and now I'm going to pop it over the second and I'm going to stamp another pizza over there. And when I take the mask off, the first pizza will appear in front of the one that's behind. I won't move that one just yet. I'll add my mask to that pizza and stamp another one here. And then I'll shuffle that one down and add a final pizza over here. Before I do anything else, I'm going to add my sentiment and I'm using my stamp positioner for this just because it'll help me line it up. I'm going to turn this pizza themed card into a thank you card. This is a fun, bouncy font that says sincere thanks. And I use my set square to line that up. And I'm going to use my Mento Tuxedo Black ink for this. I'm not planning on adding any water over the sentiment. Colour my pizzas, I'm going to use pen, but then you use them like watercolour. So I scribbled a bit on my palette, picked it up with a wet brush, and I'm going to paint it in. This is mixed media paper, if I didn't say that already, which means it's really good for water-based media. It'll take it very nicely. And the reason I'm doing it this way, rather than colouring straight onto the paper with the pens, so I want a fairly light colouring of my pizzas. I don't want it to be too bold and dark and in your face. And this way I can water down the colours to get the intensity that I require. And I like the watercolour look. So I'm using this yellow to colour the pizza crust. My daughter and I had a conversation earlier when I was talking about this card about uh, whether you can have pizzas with the cheese under the sauce instead of on top of the sauce. And apparently you can, it's a thing. I've never had one. I've never come across it before, but it is a thing. So now I've got a red pen and I'm gonna take a slightly larger brush this time and water down my color. And I'm going to paint the background pizzas as if they have sauce on top of cheese, so they're going to be all red. So now I'm going to do the top pizzas. But these are going to be the pizzas that have the cheese on top of the sauce. So I'm going to go around the edge of the topping as if it was some sauce poking out. So it's red around the edge. I've got this little bit of card under my hand because when I paint on a glass mat I find my hand can stick to it and I get a bit sort of a, a jerky action going which I don't like so it's good to have a little bit of paper there 
And now I'm going to use another, a different yellow. This is a bit more of a, I think, a, a cooler yellow, but it's just different from the crust. And paint it on over the topping where the cheese would be. And I can go in with a bit of red and drop some red in as if it was sauce poking out through the cheese. And now I'm going to take the brown pen that I've got here and add a little shadow going straight pen to paper here. I don't need to do watercolouring for this. And just add a shadow where the top pizza is overlapping the bottom pizza. And that just brings in a bit of dimension. And I think I will add a bit more yellow to the edges of the pizza just to intensify that colour a little. So my thinking with this card is, it's a thank you card, a pizza themed thank you card. And you, and you could give it to someone as a thank you for anything, but you could include maybe a voucher as a thank you present or a gift card for their favourite pizza restaurant or takeaway. So now I'll just take some tape runner, add that to the back and add this panel to the front. And there's one pizza themed thank you card. Right, onto our next card. I've got a stitched rectangle panel here and I'm making a little line where I want to put my stamp. And for this card, I'm gonna use this little pie stamp. I've got my set square here and I've pushed it up against that line that I've just drawn and I'm going to shuffle my pie down so that it is flush against my set square and that should be horizontal. Is that the word? Yes, completely horizontal on the card front. Now I've got that all lined up is erase my pencil line. Now that's erased, I'm going to treat that with talcum powder to remove any moisture, static or grease. And I'm going to stamp that in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. Wipe that off. And then stamp it in Versamark. I shall dip that in my clear embossing powder and heat it with my heat tool. I'm going to pop this back in here. I use my magnets to keep my slightly warped paper down and take a mask that I stamped and cut out of sticky note, place it over my first pie, press it down well because it's on embossing powder and I've made sure my pie stamp is nice and clean so that I don't accidentally get mucky marks everywhere and I'm going to put it a little higher up and to the left. This time I'm just going to stamp in Memento Tuxedo Black. I am not going to heat emboss this. I'm going to leave my stamp where it is and then shuffle this along a bit. And I've shuffled that along a little bit. So this pie is now the same height up the card because I haven't moved the stamp. But it is over to the right hand side, hopefully symmetrically. And while we are stamping, I'm going to add my sentiment. I've got a stamp from this set, which is Miniature Type by Clearly Besotted. And it says Sincerest Thanks on it. Again, I will use my set square here when I can stop the stamp sticking to my fingers to get that centred. Now I'm going to take my pie mask off. And I've got a heat embossed pie in the foreground and two not heat embossed pies in the background. So now I've got three pies, one of which is front and centre and heat embossed and that's the one I'm going to colour. I'm going to go direct to paper with this yellow pen just to add some brightness to this pie crust. And I'm going to add a little bit of the darker yellow on the edge of this crust here. And I'm using the grey now to colour in the pie tin. Because I heat embossed over that black ink, 
it didn't run. And I think I want to give my pies something to sit on just to bring in a slightly brighter additional colour. So I've got a light blue pen and I'm just giving them like a little blue tablecloth or something to sit on. And I will just go in with a darker blue to add a little bit of shadow. And there you go, a little pie themed thank you card. For this card, I'm going to use a cake stamp. And this is stays on ink. A lot of people don't like using stays on ink on photopolymer stamps because apparently stays on ink can damage your photopolymer stamps, something in the solvent that they don't like, don't react well together. Personally, I've not found that to be the case. I've been using stays on ink on photopolymer stamps for a long time and I can't see any damage compared to other inks. But if you're at all concerned about the possibility of damaging your stamps with stays on, then don't do that. Use some kind of water-based ink and you can always heat emboss over the top. So I've got four cakes there. I'm going to add my masks. And now I've got these little cookie stamps, three little cookies. Just going to stamp that off to season the stamp. And I'm going to stamp those behind the cakes and turn them around so they look a little bit different each time I stamp them. I'm going to colour in my cakes now. I've got a red pen here to make a nice red velvet cake. Go straight to paper with the pen. If you'd like to find some more ways of colouring in stamped images, not just using colouring pens, then do check out my recent video, Top 10 Ways to Colour Stamped Images. There's lots of ideas there. I will leave a link in the video description below. To bring in a bit of brightness, I'm going to give this cake some nice bright yellow icing. I find when using just simple brush markers like this. These are Arteza real brush pens and these are Zebra Mild Liner brush pens. Um, they're just regular old felt tips really, nothing fancy. But they smooth out nicely on mixed media paper, a bit like the Catherine Pooler inks that I often use. I think for my crockery, my plates, I'm going to use this very pale aqua colour. Again, just brings in a nice light bright colour. My cookies would be brown but the pen on its own is too dark. I want the cookies to be in the background. So I'm going to bring in my paintbrush again and water it down so that they're brown but not too dark. So I did go outside the line with my yellow here and because these are water-based pens I can reactivate it with a wet clean wet paintbrush and lift it off. I can use a microfiber cloth or a bit of paper towel and now you'd never know. If you find that there are areas of your stamped image that aren't as complete or crisp as you'd like them to be you can always go in once you've finished with a black pen or whatever colour pen would work for the ink that you've used and just fill in any gaps. There you have a happy birthday card. Right now we're going to create a little scene with three different food stamps and I'm going to heat emboss these. So I've used Memento Tuxedo Black on this burger stamp. Now the Versamark and now the heat embossing. Now we'll cover up our burger with its mask and I've got some fries in a little pack here which can go behind there and a drink which can go behind there too. I'll quickly dust that again because I've had fingerprints all over it and now we'll stamp them. There we go, there's our little scene. So I've also added a With Gratitude and heat emboss that 
Now I'm going to use my pens to colour in my burger bun and my burger and my drinks and my fries. So when you're trying to build a scene using stamps and masking, think about the object that is going to be closest to you in that scene and stamp that first. Then mask it off and then stamp the background things and they will appear behind the masked off image. I want a little cascade of ice creams going down the right hand side, which will be the right hand side when I turn it around. But I want the ice cream in the middle here to be the one in the front. So I've stamped that first. Now I'm going to stamp my next ice creams and these will appear as if they are behind the ice cream that I've already stamped. And then I'm going to cover those with these masks. Actually I can just take that one off because I don't need that one now. And stamp those on there. Now I can take those off and put them on these ones. So each successive ice cream that I'm stamping right now will look as if it's behind the one that I previously stamped. I've added a little just for you sentiment and I'm going to colour in my ice cream using my pen's direct paper again and I'm going to put the boldest colours on the middle ice cream to highlight it and I think we're going to go mint choc chip with some, hmm, what shall we do, some raspberry underneath. Now I'm going to do the water colouring again on the other ice creams just to make them background ice creams to give them a lighter colour. If you wanted with these, with the background ice creams or any background images, instead of stamping them in black you could stamp them in grey or another light colour so they don't stand out as much. Just going to give this little bit of cone here a bit of shadow under that ice cream, maybe down one side a bit. And with this one, just to give it a little bit of something extra, I'm going to cover the ice cream portion in crystal glaze. You could use glossy accents or one of the Nouveau drops for this. In fact, you could use maybe the glitter Nouveau drops and that would add some fun sprinkles. But when this dries, it dries clear and slightly dimensional. So it will make it look like your ice creams have got some dimension to them. While it's still wet, you can coax it right to the edge with a cocktail stick or a tweezer or a pokey tool or something. And while it's still wet, you can dust on a tiny little bit of glitter and that will stick in the oops crystal glaze far too much as per usual just get a little tiny little scoop here and sprinkle it over the crystal glaze and it will hopefully not obscure the color too much but it will look like gold sprinkles i think that will do now this glitter is a new investment for me I decided to look for some environmentally friendly biodegradable glitter and I found some at Sticks too. So I've got a whole range of colours. So now I can be glittering away and still be sustainable and environmentally friendly. So I need to leave that to dry now. I'm going to put it somewhere where I'm not going to stick my finger in it. For this card, instead of masking off my image, I'm going to mask off my sentiment. 
So I'm going to carefully cut this out. So I'm going to heat emboss again, but I'm going to put my sentiment down first this time. I've treated this with anti-static powder and I'm using Memento, cleaning that off and adding my verse mark. Now I'm going to pop that as accurately as I can over there. So there we have our sentiment on top of our image. And now I can colour this in. And there we have a Just Because card featuring chocolate with the sentiment layered on top of the images. And that brings us to the end of this Stamping September video. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you a few ideas of things you can do with food themed stamps that you may have and some masking ideas using masking paper. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon for my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.